What is up TBC? It's your boy Chuff Bills coming back at you yet with another video. If you guys do like this, make sure you guys go ahead and smash that red button there with the bell on the side. Today, we're going to be doing something with the Trans Am. I'm actually going to go ahead and show you, so let's get wrenching. So I went ahead and I already picked this thing up right here and what this is it's crankshaft position sensor What I'm going to show you guys is this is for the 1997 Pontiac Trans Am Firebird The really really easy fix. It's just a little sensor it plugs in where I'm going to show you guys right underneath the car So let's get underneath the car so I can show you so right here is the It's only held on by one screw and that is right there. What you're going to use is an 8 millimeter socket with an extension. It doesn't matter what type of wrench you use. In this matter, I'm just going to use my small one. I'm going to go ahead and get this off real quick. It's really, really easy. You just slide it from under and then you go right into it and you go ahead and unbolt the damn thing. So let's go ahead and do that. Get the new one in, lower the car. Here is the old one right here guys. This one is pretty bad. I mean it is covered. Even in the inside, it's really bad in there. What we're gonna do is we're gonna replace this one. Here's your little small screw that holds it in. It's not hard to actually take it out. It might feel like it is, but it's not. You just wiggle it out and it comes right out. But it's really, really easy. My best advice is to clean the spot where you take this off of. You don't want to put a brand new part on something that's dirty. Nope. The brand new one. The brand new one compared to the old one. We're gonna go ahead and replace it. It does need to be replaced. And then we're gonna try it again and see what happens. Oh, and if I forgot to mention, guys, there is also another sensor, and that's located right underneath your air intake box. It's like right next to this. You'll see this blue line right here, and it's right next to that blue line. It's technically right underneath the fuel line. You'll definitely see it. It's right next to even this cord right here. If you still can't find it, this one plugs into your air box. It's right there. If that's the case, we might have one more sensor we might have to replace. The only weird difference is, is that this one actually looked different than the one that I just put in, but I did see that there is different ones from different brands, which not. There it is, back into the car. I already plugged it in already. It pops again. Well, then, it's not that sensor. Okay guys, so the car is completely low to the ground once again. I'm sorry it's dark out here, but as you guys can tell, I took the stands out, I replaced that. So now I'm just hoping it's not this sensor right here. If it's that sensor, then holy crap man, I gotta go get another sensor. Put this air box back on. Plug the battery in. Well guys, she still didn't want to start. Now we are looking at the engine control module. If you guys don't know what this is, make sure you do your research before you start digging your hands into stuff. This engine control module actually sends a signal to your spark plugs in ignition coils, or rather your distributor, or whatever the case may be, because this is what operates your car. If this thing does not work at all, your car will not start. There will be no start, you're gonna need to get a new one, and either way, you're gonna need a new one if your car is not starting and replaced every single sensor outside of that ignition control module. Engine control modules are very common in pretty much any car you can imagine that has one, and they do blow out. Sometimes you get lucky and they don't blow out, but if you are one of those lucky ones, well, you are saving money, buddy. So there's plenty of other ways that you guys can test these out. There's one that you can take a voltmeter to it, and if you don't know what pins you have to hit, don't worry, there's another way around that as well. You can always go to O'Reilly's, have them pull one for you, and inside those boxes have instructions and tells you exactly what pins to hit to test. Now, if you don't want to go through all that trouble, per se, you don't have a voltage meter, you don't want to waste your money on a voltage meter because you're going to have to waste your more money on the sensor itself. Now, you can always tell them, look, I just need this sensor to be tested. I just need to know if this module is working or if this module is not working. That's all you need to know. That's it. Don't let them lie to you. There is a tester back there. Trust me, I work there. I know that there's a tester. We can test the ignition control modules. 
No ifs, ands, or buts about that. If they don't know how to use one, I'm pretty sure everybody in the world knows how to use an ignition control module tester. They've been around for centuries. They're really easy to use. So we're gonna go ahead and let my customer know that this engine control module here is fried. I already tested it with a voltage meter. Now, there's a, that's the only way. I, I just don't know any other way. It needs to be replaced if we want the car to continue running and run properly and start because that's the problem here the car is not starting so this is one of the main reasons right here it coils ignitions and all of that stuff has been already placed but the engine control module has not been replaced so that's the main thing that's what runs through your harness you need to have a new one of those if you don't your engine will not start and that's where it goes you they will provide the plate for you and the module for you and it will also have the dielectric grease in there already. So you can use the one that comes with it, or you can buy your own dielectric grease. It doesn't really matter as long as you put dielectric grease in between the plate and the sensor because, well, contact people. You need to make contact. The plate is pretty much like a ground. Think of it that way. It's a heat sink. So we're going to go ahead and step over there. I'm going to have a talk with him. I'm probably going to tell him that it's, it's going to be a little costly thing. But it needs to be done. But anyways, guys, let's go ahead and jump back to the house. And I'll let you guys know what the further plans and futures are. Let's do this. So we finally made it back home, guys. That Trans Am is getting to a major big headache. And the reason why she won't start, there's a many situations which you guys already know. If you guys, like I said, own a 1997 Pontiac Firebird Trans Am, you will start to know that when you replace something, something else goes bad then you have to replace that part and then hopefully that we won't have to replace any more parts anyways guys tomorrow I'm going to be getting another sensor after my doctor's appointment I've been feeling kind of very dizzy these last past few days and I really don't know why I already went to the emergency room and they gave me some pills to help with uh, an inner air infection which they think I have so hopefully tomorrow everything gets situated i can actually focus a little bit more on what i'm doing right now it's kind of hard for me to even work at work i had to go home early on friday which really does suck but i hope that i myself gets better soon i know that i don't have anything i had seven vials of blood drawn tested and i've also had my brain scanned as well so i know that i am perfectly 100 percent healthy thank god for that much wraps it up for this video guys if you guys enjoyed this amazing content make sure you guys go ahead and smash the subscribe button don't forget to hit the bell on the side give this video a thumbs up leave a comment down the section down below share this with all your friends and family i am tough feels guys it was a pleasure doing this video for you guys i will see you in the next one